All right, man, this is episode number 53 of the Cozy Corner of Cinema. This is being recorded on April 2nd, 2023. Uh, it's a beautiful, uh, cool day outside, man. These past couple of days, the weather has been kind of all over the place, so it's a little hard to uh, determine how exactly you should dress for. We had a very rainy day yesterday. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, two days ago. Yesterday actually wasn't too bad. The morning started off fairly cloudy, you know, a little bit rainy out, but as we got into the middle of the day, the sun came out. You could hear, hear the animals outside having a good time playing around the cats inside they were pretty ambivalent towards the situation they were just enjoying the slumber that uh you know we provide for them and it's just it's just a good feeling man I, i'm loving that we're going right into spring man you know uh, I, I i i love all the seasons i i would never want to live in a place where i would, could only experience just one at a time in, in terms of i'm sorry not even one at a time uh uh one uh only one you know whether it's too hot or too cold you got to you got to have that feeling of rotation man it kind of gets you into the mindset of what you need to accomplish, what you uh, 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 need, what you, what you're gonna feel that time of the year, man. We we jump to certain uh, 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 certain books, certain films, um, music, especially. You know, you hear it um, certain times of the year. You just hear the songs that kind of give you a certain vibe that uh, you know you you become a, a lot more aware of your surroundings. You know, it's great. I love like. Uh, with films like American Graffiti, you have, uh, you know, all these kids driving around. They got their music playing from the radio, and you just get that feeling, man. Songs you hear at night, songs you hear during the day that you just automatically connect with a certain time, a certain feeling. And I, I forgot who was saying it, man, but somebody had a really uh, interesting observation when it came to films like American Graffiti and um, uh, films of the 50s, these kind of youth films. In terms of the music is that they were talking about, you know, now you get on your uh, telephone, you go on Spotify or Apple and you can play whatever kind of music you want, you know, rock and roll or jazz or uh, hip hop music, you know, anything you like. Um, but you, you, it's, it's not too often that, uh, you know, uh, that you find yourself really exposed to something that you wouldn't normally be accustomed to, man. You know, you look at a film like American Graffiti and they're playing all of these just great artists of the 50s, all this great music, you know, and you're like, oh, I don't know this song, man. You know, this is this is great. And um, it was all kinds of music, man. You know, I mean, now you go to the, uh, you know, you go to the grocery store, you go, uh, you, you know, you got to pick something up. Uh, which I try not to do too often. I try not to, uh, you know, surround myself in, in places where I don't want to be. You know, if I'm at a grocery store, I'm trying to get out of there and go back home and get the job done, man. You know, I ain't trying to sit around, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, things to buy. I got no time for that, any any kind of that nonsense. But you go to the grocery store, you go out, uh, or if you're at a restaurant or a pub or something, you just hear, you know, you hear a lot of the same kinds of music, a lot of the same kind of pop music, uh, which, you know, I'm nothing wrong with it, but it seems like you hear a lot of the same songs kind of again and again, and, you know, you don't really find yourself being exposed to a lot of new music unless somebody points you in that direction, or I guess now if you're on, you know, like social media or anything like that, people are posting stuff that they like. So, you know, it's a different area. And you can't really, you know, look at the past with rose-tinted glasses like it was all great. You know, of course, there are plenty of, uh, you know, uh, uh, just artists and songs that were not up to snuff that were popular. But, uh, you know, you just got to be aware of it. Just uh, be aware of kind of um, outside surroundings, you know. Uh, out, outside forces that may influence your daily life, uh, hopefully in a positive way. You know, you come across a piece of music or you come across a piece of art, a film, a novel that you uh, is off the beaten path and you're like, oh man, this is great. This is, this is totally gives me a new fresh perspective and, and, you know, lets you go on your way and in, in a new kind of mentality that you didn't have previously, man, you know, it's just, it's something else, man. I think all, all kinds of art influences our daily lives, our interactions, us as people, you know, whether we know it or not, it's, uh, it's something special, man. But again, getting a, getting a bit of a chill out in the air today, it's fantastic. I, uh, I do have to run out after this, but, you know, the window's going to be down, the music's going to be up, it's going to be a good time, man. Or maybe I'll put on a podcast, I don't know, man, we'll, we'll figure it out when that, figure that out when the time comes, but man, we get a sip of this water here, and, uh. Oh, girl, I need it, man. I tell you, I love these uh, seltzer waters, man. You can't drink too much of them at once, though, because uh, or else your stomach starts feeling a bit off. But you have a couple of these, man. It's perfect, man. It's just it's delicious as hell. Uh, one of the films I was going to talk about last week that I didn't get an opportunity to. Um, let me rephrase that. I had an opportunity to, but last week, um, 
I record that episode on Monday, and it's just been so hectic the past couple days. I just had to get that episode out and uh, go back to uh, what I needed to go back to. And and even now, I'm still playing catch up, but uh, you know, I got a little bit more time now, so it's all good. And uh, one of the films I just wanted to mention briefly that I had finally watched um, was in relation to a film that uh, I've talked about a couple of times in the show now. I had uh, talked about uh, the New Jersey Skolmowski film EO and its inspiration from Robert Brisson's 1966 film Ahazar Balthazar. Uh, so I had finally watched this film. This came up. Uh, the time was right, and uh, it was fantastic, man. I, I, I'm not going to go too uh, too in-depth into it, man. I, I don't have any notes on it, so this is just kind of a uh, run-of-the-mind kind of uh, observation on this one. And uh, Brisson's a filmmaker who I've only seen a couple of his films, but has quickly become somebody who I really want to keep an eye on. He's made plenty of films, uh, Pickpocket, uh, Mouchette, uh, Le Argent, or how do you say it, Largent? Uh, he's a, a French for money, I believe. Uh, uh, I talked about A Man Escaped for the 1950. Oh, gosh, uh, six episode. The problem is that when I did 56 and 58, I uh, oftentimes get mixed up on the years of which films came out in 56 and which came out in 58, but I uh, believe that was 56 to my knowledge. Um, it's a fantastic film. I, it's, it's my favorite of his work that I've seen, but I've only seen that film, Mouchette, which I'm a really big fan of, and now Alzar Balthazar, and I own Le Ar- or Largent. I don't know how to say that, man. I apologize. Uh, is it Le Argent or is it Largent or... Whatever, man, you know what I'm talking about. You know what film I'm talking about. And he's a great filmmaker, man. He's uh, he's one of these th- He's This is uh, in, in relation to, I mean, uh, I, I read that Mouchette is kind of a companion film to uh, this film. And that's interesting, it being, I mean, it, it, the both films are very observational in a sense where you're just hanging with these characters. Uh, in this film, we have this donkey who uh, is kind of a uh, an orbit for a lot of these characters, a lot of their conflicts that revolve around the donkey kind of being the centerpiece of this. Uh, um, <coughs> I apologize. And the difference between um, this film and the film EO is that in that film, it feels more that the donkey is the donkey eo and that is the main character i mean this that film is uh, less dialogue heavy while there are conflicts with the other characters it's more so about the donkey in that film eo getting uh it getting himself into these situations sometimes being uh, uh just a backdrop to uh, characters that are having their own conflicts and other times it's these uh, characters who want to harm eo um and has to get out of the situation whereas in this film we have Many of the different characters. We have this one, uh, uh, I guess, closest to a lead would be this one woman. Uh, this woman, Anne uh, uh, Wyzemski, plays this character, Marie. And we have this other fellow in the film who is uh, is very manipulative. He's very cruel towards the donkey. He's always beating on it, you know, uh, uh, being very cruel to its tail. And um, ultimately, it's a film where the donkey is just the revolving kind of point to these other characters, man. While... There is a point where the donkey, you know, goes off on its own path, and we have another guy, this drunk, who is, uh, you know, taking advantage of him, and and sees kind of the situation the donkey gets himself into, and becomes very angry with that. Ultimately, it's a film about the characters and less about the donkey itself, more as just an excuse for these characters to get, um, to get the the conflicts to be front and center. Because ultimately, most of the film is not really about the donkey; it's just about everybody else. With only the only time it really becomes an issue with. Uh, in terms of it being uh, to the front of the conflict is when you have the drunker, who I apologize, I don't know, the, I don't know some of these actors' names, and uh, most of the people on IMDb, most of the uh, ones listed on IMDb don't have um, pictures, so I can refer to. I believe the actor who is the drunk in the film is this actor uh, Jean Claude Gilbert. Um, I was about to say he sounded really familiar, and then I see he's also in Mouchette, so I I don't know if he was the father in that film or what. It's been a little while since I've seen Mouchette, but that's uh, I thought I think that's a brilliant film. Um, I think it's interesting why how that would be companion pieces because I mean they feel somewhat similar. Uh, uh, observational, you have these characters uh, in this case uh, Mouchette in that film and the donkey in this film being mistreated and and inner inner uh, weaving the lives of all these people, but they they feel different enough that I mean I don't know if you'd even want to put this as a double uh, uh, in terms of. What I'm saying before, you don't want to make this. You don't want to have it be like you don't want to watch a double next two of the same kinds of films, man. But 
Uh, I mean, I guess maybe you could actually, you know, I'm thinking about it. It's been a little while since I've seen that, so my memory isn't quite as sharp as Attack on that film. But um, either way, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, this is one that I, I've owned for a couple of years now. I, I knew about it. I owned it. Um, but I didn't really know anything about it. And then circumstance came to be when, you know, it came up on my... Uh, films to watch and i thought it was perfect timing so uh, i do apologize i don't have i don't have any notes on that or um and it's and i'm not able to go more in depth so i did just want to bring that up as a recommendation of something really fantastic that i watched recently uh because the past uh, week or so because i was editing on a project man some of my uh watching has fallen behind um writing has been keeping at a pretty steady pace man and that's the thing that you got to do you know when i leave my house man i always carry my bag with me and i got in my bag my book whatever book i'm reading and my two different notebooks man you find any of those pockets of time you get throughout the day to get your reading done to get your writing done um it's important man what i was talking about before in terms of a lot of it you know the attention spans now you just you know you go out to a uh, which i'm not going out to a restaurant or the only time i'm at a pub is if i I, if i'm like killing time before a film or something like that in between a film not beforehand but if i'm at the pub man you, you know you, you just everybody's just glued to their telephones man and just having nonsense conversations it's, it's just noisy as hell they're glued to the tv man and you know if i'm there man i i, I ain't i ain't there's nothing to look at on my phone man i'm there's i don't have any interest in any of that social media crap or anything like that i mean i have an instagram for the sake of people that certain people that to contact me and i can only get me on instagram or um you know in terms of news or anything like that film news or whatever but for the most part i i find most of that stuff to be absolute uh, uh wastes of time man all your doing is just bringing yourself down um you know people are like oh you see what this person said online or you hear that that celebrity did this or this person said that i'm like no nah, and i don't i don't have time for any of that nonsense man i got i got so much to do and not enough time to do it man there's so much to read there's so much to write there's so much to watch man i don't give a damn about what some stranger a thousand miles away has to say about anything man it's it's insanity man absolute insanity and if you're wasting your time on that if you're happy then go for it but if you find yourself kind of you know people are like oh you know i can't believe this this year is flying so fast i've done nothing this year it's like well man get off the goddamn telephone and do something man you know i don't i can't relate to uh any of anyone anyone saying like, oh i've wasted the year i've done nothing so far i'm bored he's like if you're bored man you got to rethink your life man because uh you ain't gonna get that time back and if you feel like you've wasted your time before well now's the perfect time to get that time and that you do have and do something with it like taking great art like create uh you know you could write a great novel you could write a uh, write a screenplay you could work on your uh, paintings you can work on your music you could do whatever it is man don't uh, don't waste your time on the on just nonsense like get off you know get off twitter get off facebook get off get off all that crap man it's it's only going to be killing you man in the long run you're going to find yourself finding it harder to uh, uh uh keep your attention span going man it's just it's, you're getting upset over people who don't even know you exist man it's insanity um but two of the films that I had seen on Friday, I had an interesting double feature of two films that I wouldn't have talked about on their own, but I thought the there were some interesting parallels between these two films. Um, just watching them back to back, uh, I want to make sure that I get the uh, names here. Cause I don't want to, I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, two films that I I liked quite a bit. Um, two films that uh, do that fall short, just short of being great, but are both very interesting films that I find are going to be worth your time if you are in the right headspace for them. Uh, that first film that I saw is from director Hilner uh, Pamazon, who has directed a couple films previously that I have known about, but I have not seen. He directed this film, Godland, um, which is a Danish and a, I think it, what the hell was it? It's Danish and it's something else. It's uh, Finnic, uh, Icelandic, thank you. Uh, Danish and Icelandic. And then I watched this other film uh, from director Mark Jenkin, who has this, uh, uh, I don't, he did a film a couple years ago, Bait, not the shark film, because that was popping up a couple times, but a different film from 2019 called Bait that I'm not familiar with. I believe the actor in that film is one of the actors in this film, but he directed this film, uh, uh, how do I say this, Ennis Men, that's right. Uh, and it's very interesting the way that these two films kind of uh, draw some parallels to each other. For one, they're both on film. You know, Ennis Men is directed as uh, shot on 16 millimeter, I believe, and Godland, I believe, is on 35 millimeter. But uh, the aspect ratio of it is almost to make it seem like I don't know the exact uh, terms of any aspect ratio or anything like that. But it's uh, it's like it's, uh, squared. I can't even try to explain it. I'm sure there's a the, I'm sure there's a uh, 
the word for it that I just don't know, man. I, I know absolutely nothing about any kind of uh, filming techniques. It's, in, uh, it's 133 to 1 ratio, if that helps you out. But you have these two films, man. You have this film, Godland. We have this main guy. He's a priest. And he's being sent to uh, this really remote island, man. It's, it's to the uh, southeast, I believe I said it is. And it's in a part of Iceland. He's going there to uh, build this church. Um, and along the way, we kind of... It, it's a film that's really put into two halves. The first half is the journey. And the second half is what happens when he gets there, man. It's a beautifully shot film. You have various... The, the editing on both films is fantastic, but what I really like about the editing here is that it really makes great use of different landscapes, uh, the way they travel on this film, very murky days, very, you see kind of the strain in this priest who's going on. This priest is played by this actor, Elliot Crossett Hove, plays his character Lucas, and the trials and tribulations that he gets onto along the way, um, he has an, a, an old camera with him that he can only have X amount of um, photographs with him, which the film opens up with a text that says that the film was inspired by seven um, uh, photographs. Uh, but but I, I looked online, apparently that's completely false. Apparently that was just made up for the film. But it's, So it's weird to put there, but I guess in the context of having its own reality of it being like, oh yeah, th these were actually seven photographs, which... Uh, you know, you, you start to question who found these photographs, you know, what is the context of some of these, but it doesn't matter, man. Um, when you, you, uh, you, we sense a bit of, hosp of uh, hostility in the air, whether it be uh, from uh, uh, Lucas's own delusions or from these other characters, um, just kind of knowing the landscape, knowing how to traverse these, these long kind of uh, areas. We have this other character, Ragnar, played by Ingvar Sigursten. Uh, who is excellent in the film as well. I believe he was the one who... Oh, wait a minute. No, I might be getting something mixed up. So I'm going to actually backtrack on that. Okay. Uh, he was in the director's... Uh, one of his previous films I wanted to mention, A White, White Day, which is one that I've known about but I haven't seen. But the way the film is edited is unique because the contrasting of the landscapes is fantastic. You have these... You have, you know, early on, it's, it's uh, this closed... This really kind of interesting-looking, um, uh, uh, almost claustrophobic... Uh, uh, open church that he got there when he's being sent originally by another priest, and then when he's on, when he's in these exteriors, these um, you know, the the ocean and these these beautiful greeneries, and it's that there's this one uh, uh, sequence in particular that really stood out in terms of how it was shot or how it looked, I should say. It's this icy kind of area. Uh, uh, it's you just see the breath, the the uh, whatever they breathe. You see the actual uh, their their breath in the air. And you just feel for the main character, Lucas, who is just the more and more he goes on, you just physically and, and even mentally, which become later in the film, uh, uh, kind of his, uh, he's not ready for, for an experience like this. You, you get the sense that he's been kind of closed off and that he's, he's oblivious to a lot of his surroundings. You know, he, he has trouble riding a horse and you figure that if you're in, if you're going to be going in, in a, in quite a dangerous place. A, a, a journey like this to have some sort of experience and background but um it's in the second half when we get into more character um stuff which is where i do have some problems but uh what i wanted to get to i don't want to run out of time here talking about uh, uh ennis men is the uh the, the the contrast there we have this film that's these beautiful open landscapes these beautiful greeneries it's just Everything is, is perfectly in frame, whereas you have this film, which is entirely set on this island called Ennis Men, and we have this main character uh, played by actor Mary Woodveen, who is on this island. She is keeping track of the temperature of these, these, this one little patch of flowers. Um, it's, it's fairly monotonous for her. She does a lot of the same things on a daily basis. She records her uh, findings. She'll drop a rock into this well. Um, she'll go back to the small house and she'll, um, you know, make tea and read a book and go to bed. It's very monotonous kind of lifestyle, very isolated lifestyle. Both these characters, Lucas and, um, and, uh, the volunteer are both very isolated. Even with Lucas having other, uh, you know, every, every, all the uh, people around him, you really get a sense of him just completely, really by himself, man. He's in his own head. He cares about this equipment that no one else seems to know exactly what it is or even really cares. You know, he's trying to get photographs of these people, but they're not really taking it very seriously. And, uh, Ennis Men, where you have this character who, uh, you know, there's other characters in the film, uh, uh, 
but there is still that that real feeling of isolation where you start to feel for her. She's running out of tea, running out of gasoline to power this generator, and uh, you, there's a sense more so of uh, hysteria and of anxiety more so than in Godland. I mean, this is more of a, of a I mean, a, a psychological horror film for sure. Godland definitely is not that. It's more of just a drama. And I don't want to say that as a as something uh, uh, derivative. You know, it's a very derivative thing to say. Oh, it's just this. It's just this. No, no film is just what it may seem on the surface. Man, there's always something going on. If you put ten comedies together, you put ten action films, you put ten whatever together, and you think they're exactly the same thing. Man, there's no intricacies in any of them. Then you're you must not be watching close enough, man. And and that's not what I mean for this film. Um, but when it comes to Enos Men is that uh, the film is much more overt in its hallucinatory uh, feelings. It, it plays a lot more with time in terms of uh, certain events may ha uh, that happen repeatedly. Uh, at first, we get feelings of, uh, like I said before, the rep repetitive kind of nature. She does this thing every day. She's very isolated. She has this radio that sometimes she's able to communicate with. But then as the film goes on, and the film slowly eases into a more, um, a more lucid kind of framing where we have, uh, certain uh, images that uh, she is almost not even fully fully uh, reacting to, which I find uh, very interesting, is that the film never gets um, grotesque and never becomes a you know shocking displays of uh, violence or gore, which can oftentimes um, be put be put off. It can put an audience member off, um, and a, and a film that. This is more so my kind of film, my kind of horror film. I really enjoy very slow um, psychological films like this that um, are very divisive, um, you know, where you, I, I find those to be far more interesting when a film you don't exactly know what you're getting into in terms of uh, how you'll respond to a film. And when I say that, I mean more so in the fact of there's no preset expectations. Because regardless if you try to or not, oftentimes you can find yourself, at least I find myself, trying to trying to bury those expectations. But if you know a film has been uh, critically received um, phenomenally or has been you know, critically dismissed and it's getting these terrible reviews. I think on some level you have uh, a certain gateway to what you may feel about it. Now, of course, that's not always the case, and, and most times it actually isn't the case. You know, even films like, uh, you know, a film I thought was fantastic from last year, Empire of Light, which I talked about, uh, I devoted an episode to it, uh, and I mentioned in that episode it's a film that critically did not do well. Um, I think it was not what people were expecting, and I thought it was excellent. I thought it was a very good film. Um but it's important to, to watch films like this that may you may not be able to, one, properly react to, and two, it, you may not immediately know how you feel about it. So that's why with a film like this, you know, mileage may vary if it's going to be your kind of film or not, but I think it's important, like I was saying before, with music and stuff, to kind of uh, uh, perhaps see, uh, experience art that you are not entirely sure of, man. Films like this I find much more interesting. I, uh, I... The lately, I don't know, man. The the, the past few years, I, I, there's hasn't been many horror films that have really sat with me where I really thought about them afterwards and went, ah, that was really a good film. You know, there are some obviously I enjoy, but for the most part, when I, I, I don't know, I don't want to make any digs in any kind of films or anything like that because everybody enjoys their own thing. But oftentimes, when the, there's been a, a handful of horror films the past couple of years that have gotten all this critical attention and has gotten this and that, and I just they just don't do anything for me. They're they're not really my kind of films. There's another film that. Uh, I won't say the name of it, but you might be able to guess. And I'm not even throwing shade at this film. It's a different kind of film. But there's another film, a recent horror film that came out a couple years ago. Uh, you know, we have uh, isolated characters on an island um, that I just really didn't like. I thought it was very um, uh, obnoxious. I thought it was very bombastic. There was really there was no subtlety. It was more interested in the imagery than anything else. Um, and it just I, I found it to be a very shallow film. But people liked, you know. And, and people can watch this film and go, hey, you know, I, this was terrible. You know, like very slow. What's, you know, nothing's been happening. And that's fine, man. But that's what I'm saying before is that you got to take chances and see films that um, you're not going to be sure on. I mean, even recently I was talking about I was very, uh, you know, I was very high on Skin America. I thought that was one of my favorite films of last year. And I, I talked to acquaintances who thought it was terrible and others who thought it was great. You know, it's, it's those those films that spark conversation I find significantly more interesting than just whatever kind of brand new, you know, 
every every A twenty four film is critically received amazingly, and then it's like, all right, well, are these actually good films, or you're just watching it because you know it's you're saying that it's good because you 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 have this expectation going in, and and I'm not saying that I'm not making any kind of generalizations or anything like that, but oftentimes when I do see certain films get reactions, I I do have to wonder if there is something more going on, but um. I got completely a, a kind of sidetracked here, and I, I ended up running out of more time than I ended up needing. But both films have a very slow pace. They're very slow moving. A Godland is about two and a half hours, whereas uh, Ennis Men is about an hour and a half. So I think it's a film that, uh, well, I, I Godland does... I, I have more so problems in the second half with some character motivations not exactly lining up for me. I do think it... It, it doesn't feel long, but in the in retrospect, I think there are moments where it does take its time to a point where the film is built up enough that uh, it didn't totally work for me. But it is it is a very excellent film. That is one thing I really want to mention. And Ennis Men as well, I have, I have problems with. You know, I, I think I, I have some... About halfway through, I, I, I did start to question exactly where the film was going in a way where I was starting to wane interest a little bit, but it but it quickly picked up, man. I, I, I thought there was, uh, it was a very interesting interesting film. I, I think both films are completely worth your time if you know what you're getting into. If you have this, if you are, if you're looking for some, something to constantly be happening, if you need that constant kind of uh, visual uh, uh, or narrative kind of treatment where, you know, you, you gotta, you know, keep on and on and on, then these films are not going to be for you. Um, but if you're walking in with that mindset of knowing what, you know, uh, okay, you know, you're going to sit down, you're going to surrender yourself to the cinematic vortex, then you're going to be in for some, uh, two really special films. Uh, I, I think I, I don't have any, I don't think I think I have any real need to revisit either of these films, but as uh, as watching them back to back, um, if Ennis Men had been longer, I may have felt differently, uh, more negatively. Like I was saying before, with uh, when I did when I watched Memoria and the film Days back to back, both of them are over two hours and have that same kind of mood. But uh, I think Days suffered for me because I watched it so close to Memoria. But this these films, man, you get you get through Godland, you get through that experience, and you go through and then you go into uh, Ennis Men. And you're in for something really special. And I think that these films, both these films are really worth your time. And uh, you, you're going to want to keep an eye on them. Uh, you got two very talented filmmakers here. Hilner Palmason and Mark Jenkin. The name's a lot easier to say. Um, and they're definitely worth your time, man. I look at these films and it, it seems like real, true filmmaker, filmmaking craft, man. That's, uh, they're, they're doing their own thing. They're not, they're not by a studio system. They're just making the kind of art that they find interesting. And I found both these films incredibly interesting. Uh, so definitely want to keep these films in your radar. Alzar Balthazar, or Alzar Balthazar, I should say. You want to keep on your radar as well. Uh, make sure you're making the most of your time, man. Get off the internet, get off social media, unless that's what you want to do. Then have fun doing it, man. Enjoy your life. It's yours. You're, the whole point of life is to do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, man. Because you ain't going to get... That time back that you used up, so with the time that you still have, you might as well use it to do what it is you want to do. And with that, plenty to do today. Oh, I never even said what time I was recording this at. Did I? I don't remember. Oh, man, I'm usually pretty good about that. But either way, enjoy the rest of your guys' day. We've got a whole week ahead of us, plenty to do. We've got plenty of time to get the job done, but we don't want to waste your time, man, because it's going to be gone before we know it, and we want to leave a good life behind us, a fulfilled life, mentally, spiritually, physically, anything you want, man. But all right, man, you guys take care.